is 15 to 20 LPA possible as a Java developer? You see, everywhere I see on the internet or you generally see on Quora or any place, these 15 to 20 LPA, 16, 17, whatever above 15, mostly they tell you only with Python or data engineering or data science it is possible at around two to three years of experience. But from my personal experience, from what I have seen from different people, I can tell you, yes, indeed 15 to 20 is possible at around 2.5 to 3.5. As a one year experience, it might not be possible possible at two also it might or might not be possible in few cases i have seen people make it around to 13 so when it comes to 15 plus 3 plus there is a good scope currently so in this video i wanted to discuss few mandatory things that we need to learn if we want to make 15 plus 15 to 20 there are few things on the java side only on the backend, I'm not talking about full stack, only on the backend developer, if you want to make this package, there are a few mandatory things that you have to learn. And there are six to seven things which I wanted to share. And if you learn this, again, it is not confined to these, it's not limited to these. There are a lot of things you can learn, but the mandatory things which are very important, I'm sharing in this video. So firstly, the most important thing and the most mandatory thing is Java 8. You see, if you learn Java 7, if you learn the OOPS concepts, only to a certain extent you will be able to succeed. But without Java 8, nowadays, nowadays it is very difficult. For example, you just go and open Naukri and you see Java developer and you just see the mandatory requirement. In any job, there are two things. One is mandatory requirement. The other one is additional requirements like good to have. So first thing that comes in any kind of Java developer role nowadays, most of the jobs is Java 8. And the concepts of Java 8 are so important because now I do agree there is more than Java 15. Java has released so many versions but most of the applications, most of the job market currently is around Java 8. So try to learn Java 8. It is in YouTube. You have so many good things like most important concepts like functional interface, lambda expressions and very most important topic streams. You learn these topics. What happens when you know these topics? Most of your interview will get co covered over here itself one year two year three year whatever experience you are if you learn java 8 it is always very good especially functional interface lambda expressions and streams and few other features that they have introduced and java 7 and normal oops concepts anyways you are going to learn for any experience java 7 and oops concepts you are definitely going to learn so first target to learn when you are trying for these higher packages especially at 2.5 to 3 years should be java 8 and if you ask me what are the good sources to learn Java 8, YouTube is there, you can go to Udemy, but YouTube is sufficient is what I feel and whatever coding you are doing in Java 7, the for loops and all these things, you can just practice it with Java 8 using that for each and streams and all these things. So this is the first thing and second thing, SQL. Any backend developer, forget about frontend, any backend developer, the basic thing, you'll be able to do the coding, you'll be able to do the operations on the database. And on the database side, mostly now nowadays, two databases have come up. One is a SQL, the relational database, and the other one is NoSQL database, for example, Redis. It is always good to learn one NoSQL database as well, but as a mandatory thing, you try to learn first SQL, and most important concept in SQL, see, insert, delete, update, select, all people will be able to do that is a basic thing you will know but most importantly you learn joins if you learn joins and that will really help you in sql so the second thing which you should learn when you're trying for these bigger packages of 15 plus is database related stuff when i say sql not only you learn how to do sql operations but you also need to be aware how you actually can interact from the code to sql like jdbc or something like that so learn both the things, how you can do operations on the database, how do you write your queries and second one is how to connect the code from how to connect the code from Java to SQL and all these things. And third most important thing is Spring. After you learn Java 8 and SQL, the third one is you move a bit up and you learn Spring. Spring is very, very important because the old way of bean creation, the hard coded way of class name, variable name equal to new that is gone. You will not find anywhere except in the legacy applications. So you should learn Spring and in Spring there are so many things, Spring security and all these things. But most importantly, you should be aware on dependency injection concepts and what is inversion of control and what exactly Spring does. So does that mean you shouldn't learn the other things? It's not like that. But for the experience of two to three years, it's good 
it's important and it's mandatory that you learn the concept of spring dependency injection what exactly is dependency injection how it does what is application context what is at the rate resource what is at the rate component what is the purpose of it and what is the difference between normal bean creation and this way of springs bean creation and what exactly is the comp what exactly is the purpose and the concept of inversion of control so third most important thing you learn spring and it is really going to be important for your bean creation because that is the most basic thing in any kind of a java code and fourth thing you learn spring boot if possible i'm not saying it is mandatory but at least you should be aware on what is the concept of spring boot like for example take a spring application you can't test it stand alone you have to take that spring application build the war file take and deploy into some container like apache tomcat or weblogic you need to deploy there and you can test it the basic difference in spring boot you don't need to go and deploy anywhere it comes with an inbuilt server which is tomcat so there are other things as well the way you can do the exception handling the structure of spring boot project so at least be aware on the spring boot stuff like the basics of spring boot and what is the difference between a normal java application a spring application and a spring boot application it's not really required to go in depth in spring boot but at least you need to be aware on what is spring boot and what is the application structure what is the structure of the project and all these things the next one is you be aware on jenkins you see as a developer it's not only about coding you should be someone who can code you can deploy you can test it's like a full stack you need forget about front end but at least in the back end you you need to be able to do most of the things so at this time when you talk about jenkins you at least know how the build takes place and where you store the code you need to learn at least one of the version control system say tortoise svn or say git git is widely used it will be good if you can learn git if you find git as difficult thing at least you need to be aware on what is the concept of version control system and you need to understand how jenkins works at least if you are not able able to build this jenkins job you need to be aware on the purpose of jenkins and what exactly jenkins does and why do we actually use it so try to learn the purpose of jenkins and what exactly it is used for and the next thing is maven so when you take any project nowadays you don't manually go and import all your jar files into the project you don't build the project there is something known as maven which helps you add the dependency which you have and if you have that particular jar or war whatever it is in your central repository it is going to automatically download that particular jar file or war file into your project and you can use the things which are there for example say that you have a project a and you want to use some functionality which is present in project b so what do you do you take the project b's name there is something known as group id and artifact id version so you take those things from project b you mention in the pom.xml in project a and maven automatically downloads all the things from project b and you can use it in the project a so this is how most of the projects are structured nowadays they use maven gradle and used to be used in monolithic designs but nowadays people are using mostly maven so try to be aware on maven and how exactly what is a dependency what is dependency management and what is scope what is group id what is artifact id so at overall hindsight you learn what exactly is maven and how it is useful and all these things so is it that you learn only these concepts and you ignore aws you leave docker you leave kubernetes you leave unit testing no you learn everything that you can but these things which i'm sharing in this video are like mandatory things at least you know these things so that even though you don't know the other things it is okay at least if this much you are able to answer and the other things the interviewer is definitely going to feel this guy can cope up because he knows to a certain extent and final most important thing is unit testing in most of the places most of the code which is there you will find j units it is really important to learn j units nowadays because a lot of people can do the coding but at j units they struggle a bit it's not that really difficult so try to learn unit testing like unit testing is so much underrated anywhere you go they feel it like it's not required but it is actually required most of the people whom you will talk to most of the projects whom you will see they will do the unit testing you know why automation and all these things have come up why not manual testing manual testing is now gone and automation testing is what is rising j unit is a kind of automation testing at the code level so try to learn j units it's not that difficult there are just two three concepts like mocking and assertions so try to learn j units and it is really good going to help you so in summary the first one you need to know mandatorily is java 8 
the concepts of Java 8 that have been introduced. If you are able to learn about Java 8, Java 10, Java 15 and all these things then definitely you should learn. But first you should learn Java 8 and then you can go to all the advanced concepts and advanced versions. The second one you learn SQL like how you can do the database operations and how you can connect your code to the database. The third one you learn Spring and what is the concept of dependency injection and what is the concept of inversion of control and how exactly the bean creation differs in a normal Java project to a Spring Java project. And the next one is Spring Boot. At least the basics of Spring Boot, if you are not able to build the project in Spring Boot, at least you need to know the structure even though you don't have real time experience, you should have learning experience in Spring Boot. The next one, you be aware on how Jenkins is working even though you are not able to write the script and build a job, at least you should know how the job is working. The next one is Maven. So how exactly Maven works, what is dependency management and all such stuff. And finally, unit testing. You learn what is JUnit, <coughs> learn what is Mockito, learn what is assertions and all these things. So is it, again I am saying, again I am repeating, is it confined to only these topics? No. As much as you can learn, you can learn AWS, you can learn cloud, you can learn Docker, Swagger and all these things. And one more thing, l try to learn REST and web services as well. Th it is very important you know the structure of REST and web services and what is the difference between SOAP web services and what are REST web services. Like when do you use GET, when do you use PUT, when do you use PATCH post, delete and what do you use for addition of a resource, what do you use for updation of a resource. Like if you want to add a customer into a table, what exactly you need to use at the rate put or at the rate post. If you want to do updating a particular record in the table, what you should use. So these are also very important. So if you are able to learn the other things as well, Docker, Kubernetes, Swagger, SOAP UI testing, Groovy scripting, automation testing, that is also good. But before you go to that, try to learn all these things and I'm quite sure and I hope really uh, these will be helpful for you during your job search. Thank you so much for watching the video.